Hey guys, yes, we're back again with another slice of tabletop gaming fun. And if you're a fan of horror, then stay tuned to hear about some of the latest developments in horror and some very cool models from Malifaux. And if not, well, we also have plenty of sci-fi, fantasy and other stuff to tempt you with. So without further ado, let's dive in. While some of the more fiendish models from Helderado might remind you of an image from a Hieronymus Bosch painting, they're nevertheless popular, especially in Europe and amongst fans of the early French edition of the rulebook. Check out these releases from Cypher Studios, and while they might not be to everyone's taste, you could certainly find a place for them in your demonic army or even your empire force if you only wanted the human models. The fearsome basilisk may be able to strike down a hero with a glance, but here's one that's been rendered in resin by Warhammer Forge. If you play Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, you may well be in the market for one of these beasties to serve as an elite monster to battle your motley crew of dungeon delving adventurers. However, if you play one of the bigger fantasy battle games, you may well have come up with some rules and stats for yourself. If you wanted to feel this terrifying king of serpents in your reptilian army. Of course Warhammer Forge has some experimental rules already made for Warhammer Fantasy Battles on their website. However if you have some ideas on how you would stat this monster up for a game like Kings of War or Gods of Battle, then why not email them to us here at Beasts of War with submissions at beastsofwar.com and you never know we may put them up for our fans to download. The board game Dust Tactics and its new tabletop version Dust Warfare are about to get some Soviet blood added to the current Allied and Axis factions. The Soviets will come with their own mechanized walkers, troops and command squad and there are even some really cool Soviet heroes to give your troops some extra punch. Not to be outdone, the Axis and Allies have also received new boxes of command and hero models perfect for holding the line against that new Red Army. Fantasy football is always popular and the female elven players from Grebo are similarly popular amongst officiandos for their excellent sculpts and other attributes. These two star players are the latest to join the ranks of the Sylvan Elf team and are somewhat more reserved than some of the other models in their range. However, if you're a player of a necromantic or Norse team, you might be interested in the Grebo Flesh Golem, or perhaps the Snow Troll. If you're looking for a solid lump of somewhat dead flesh to form a solid block against opposing heavy hitters, then the Flesh Golem well, he's your man, or many men, depending on the number of parts used. Oh, and don't try to give him some complex plays for the Flesh Golem. Hit that one really hard could be considered complicated. Apps, well they're all the rage for tabletop games nowadays, but the jury is still out on how useful they actually are. However, the guys over at Privateer Press have announced the release of their War Room app. The War Room will have access to all the up-to-date stat cards and force building technology at the stroke, well, of a touch screen. Does this spell the doom of the humble rulebook? We're betting it doesn't, but there's nothing like the feeling of the spine of a rigid hardback clenched in your fist to make you feel like you've got something substantial for your money. I've yet to feel the same level of satisfaction when purchasing an app, so what do you guys think? Infinity is well loved by fans for its anime inspired art style and fantastically detailed models. However, this style can be difficult for all but the most dedicated modeler to replicate well on their game board. However, MicroArt Studio have come to your rescue with some easy to assemble laser cut terrain kits specifically designed with the Infinity game in mind. We have these superb holographic advertising boards complete with acrylic inserts depicting the cool anime art. But of course that's not all, there are a number of cool additions from walls to apartment blocks to computerized displays that also feature these acrylic inserts. If you're a keen Infinity player and you want some cool terrain that's only a spray and a wash away from tabletop readiness, then you really should go and check them out. 
If you find yourself at a loose end on April 21st and you're near London, then you might want to make plans to get to Salute 2012 over at the Excel Centre in London's Docklands. All the major players in the UK tabletop gaming industry, well they're all going to be there, plus loads from further afield. And you'll get the chance to see some of the newest and best talent from the gaming world. They'll be painting, demonstrating games and pressing the flesh with their fans. The list of this year's games and traders and the details of how to get tickets and travel are all available on the Salute website. The Beasts of War team are pulling out all the stops to get to Salute, so bar something catastrophic, you can be sure to see at least a few familiar faces at the Excel Center on the day. Last year was great and you can check out some of the interview videos we recorded on the Beasts of War website now. Japanese mythology serves as the inspiration for the game Bushido. And their most recent round of models? Well, they're no exception. Some of the models are still at the concept stage, but the guys over at GCT Studios are pushing forward with their release schedule. And if you're keen on Eastern designs, you'll not be disappointed one bit by their style. So if you're looking for some ninja or samurai and perhaps a cool new game with a more oriental feel, then why not take a trip to the GCT Studios website and check out what Bushido has to offer. The dark skirmish game Malifaux has steadily gained popularity over the last year, and with sculpts like these it's easy to see why people just love the whole mix of Wild West, steampunk and the macabre that Malifaux models epitomise. The range of models available for the game has been steadily increasing, with alternative master models to lead your gangs, and larger sized avatar models set to make your force a stunning tabletop experience, as well as fun. If you're a fan of Malifaux then why not come on over to the Beasts of War website and tell us all about it. We're looking for a Malifaux czar to help us kickstart game coverage for this gruesome game and you might just be the player that we're looking for. Check out these ruin bases from German company Tabletop Art. A well-painted base, well, it can really set a miniature apart from the rest, and who doesn't want their heroes and generals of their army, well, to be a step above the quality of their normal troops. However, as many tournaments give out points, or at least limit penalties for models that are properly based, perhaps a few precast bases are an easy way to sort that out. Especially if you're time limited, which let's face it, is one of the big complaints for most mature gamers. Warlord Games have announced the release of their plastic 28mm US Army. Yep, it looks like the Allies are set to make a comeback against the 28mm might of the Third Reich. Containing a whopping 25 models, this box gives you the guts of a starter army for any 28mm World War II games, or even weird World War games, and is chock full of weapon options. An army grunts with faces straight from the pages of Commando Comics. However, if your tastes are more Eastern Front, then check out the Soviet Assault Engineers. These armoured warriors are clad in stout metal armour, more reminiscent of the medieval battlefield. But if the stories are to be believed, these plates saved more than a few lives on the battlefield. Perhaps with some homebrew rules, they might save some of your forces too. The Core is a new faction for the post-apocalyptic skirmish game Dark Age. And we've got three models to look at so far. The Pathfinder, a savage conglomeration of claws and armour designed to mince up your opponent into a nice spicy man bolognese. The Rend, a chainsaw armed robot infantryman ready to cut a swath of destruction through enemy ranks and a menial bot, the mechanical foot soldier of the core ranks. We look forward to getting a glimpse of the next wave of core models very soon, so stay tuned to Beasts of War if you're the kind of guy or gal who likes spiky robot death machines. The Cerebus weapons platform from Puppets War isn't just a cool upgrade to stick onto your favourite tank model. Oh no, it could also serve as a static weapons emplacement or with a little conversion you could add some tracks and hey, it's a vehicle in its own right. Either way, these twin linked flak cannons could easily represent your favourite weapon loadout for an anti-aircraft gun 
or with a lower position on the guns, anti-tank. And let's face facts, which 40k player out there isn't looking for twin-linked auto cannons or just a set of big shooters for your horde of greenskins? Check out this fantastic new plastic kit from Fireforge Games. These are the Teutonic Knights formed to escort and aid pilgrims on their trips to the Holy Lands. These models could easily represent a more fantasy based knightly order and as they're plastic you could even mix and match them with some other plastic sci-fi kits to produce some really cool cavalry. Can anyone say Black Templars? If you've been following our How to Play Infinity guide, then guess what? Yes, part three is here this week. So, get a load of this. In this video, we're going to highlight a decisive factor in battles, the modifiers. The first modifier we're going to talk about is range. Depending on how far away our target is, the accuracy of your weapon will provide modifiers to our ballistic skill value. Let's see it in a game. Here we have a Halka and a Line Kazakh. They're both going to shoot at each other with their rifles. But the long distance between them means a higher difficulty. The optimum range of their rifles is less than the distance between them, so they both suffer a minus three modifier. 11 minus three equals eight, so both will hit on an eight or less. But what happens if we add to this confrontation a figure armed with a sniper rifle? The Jambazan sniper has a ballistic skill of 12, and at this range with his sniper rifle, he has a plus three modifier as the distance is favorable to him. This means that while a lying Kazakh with a rifle needs to get a dice roll of eight or less, the Jan Bazan needs to roll a 15 or less. We roll the dice and the Jan Bazan gets seven and 13, while a lying Kazakh rolls a five, which is nullified, so he must perform two ARM rolls. The lying Kazakh fails both rolls so he passes directly to the death state. The next modifier we're going to talk about is cover. A covered status grants a positive modifier to our armor and a negative modifier to the ballistic skill value of those trying to shoot us. Cover. A Halka in this active turn plans to assault a placement defended by a lying Kazakh. The active player makes his Halka figure advance to attack the enemy Kazakh. But the Lion Kazakh is in base contact with cover, which causes a minus three modifier to the Halka's ballistic skill roll. I have to point out that if the Lion Kazakh figure is not in base to base contact with cover, then the figure will not have the cover modifiers. Let's see what happens. The Halka gets a 10, a seven and a three. The Lion Kazakh gets a five. A dice roll of 10 would normally be enough for the Halka to hit but the cover of his enemy reduces his ballistic skill to only eight. However, the seven is a successful hit. The Kazakh must now perform an arm roll. But what happens now? The Lion Kazakh has a plus three modifier due to the cover. The ARM roll is a 12. Adding the plus three modifier for cover and the Lion Kazakh's ARM value of one, the damage value of the Halka's weapon is beaten. So the Lion Kazakh survives. Taking these modifiers into consideration, Infinity Troops will act as real soldiers, searching for cover and taking advantage of the optimal ranges in a tactical manner. Interesting as always, and remember to stay tuned for other episodes in that series. So that about wraps it up for another episode. If you want to stay abreast of the latest news and new releases, then you can come and check us out at www.beastsofwar.com. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's something new every day, so if you're looking for a quick fix of gaming action, then don't forget to check in often. So until next time, you have been watching On The Table.